Hi everyone, welcome back to A Level Biology Help. So today I'm going to be taking you through the sixth required practical for AQA A Level Biology, which is the use of aseptic techniques to investigate the effect of antimicrobial substances on microbial growth. Right, so let's get straight into it. So first of all, I'm just going to talk about what actually is a aseptic technique. Aseptic technique is something that is used to prevent contamination. Conta preventing contamination is an essential part of this practical as it produces um, repeatable and reliable results. Because if your apparatus was contaminated with bacteria, obviously that would affect your results. So how is aseptic technique achieved? The points I'm about to list are worth remembering as you may be asked them in the exam. The first thing that is recommended is to work closely to a Bunsen burner. This keeps the environment as sterile as possible and it also produces a convection current that carries the um, bacteria in the air away from your apparatus, so your agar plate. Close windows and doors, again, to stop um, airflow carrying bacteria. Wipe surfaces with disinfectant or antibacterial spray before and after the practical, again, to um, prevent contamination of unwanted bacteria. Minimise opening of containers with the bacteria. Containers with the bacteria are things like the... Um, broth that you use to get your bacteria from for the experiment. This is important as it prevents um, unwanted bacteria from the air from getting into the container. Flame the neck of any bottles used before and after their use. By flaming the neck this means that you're just, in, just passing the top of the bottle through the, the Bunsen burner flame a couple of times. Again, this ensures that unwanted bacteria are killed, so it prevents contamination. Flame the inoculating loop before use. The inoc inoculating loop is the um, wire loop tool that you use to transfer the bacteria to the Petri dish. Right, so now we are going to get on to what the actual practical is. So the first step in the practical is you transfer your bacteria from your broth, which is um, a solution that contains your bacteria and water, nutrients, that kind of thing, to the agar plate, which is a Petri dish filled with agar gel. And then using a sterile plastic spreader, this may come in a specially sealed um plastic bag or if not you you will have to flame it in the Bunsen burner flame. Evenly distribute the bacteria on the plate using the spreader. Make sure to evenly distribute it to get reliable results. Obviously if your um, spreader is plastic like I've mentioned it wouldn't be ideal to pass it through a Bunsen burner flame before distribu distributing the bacteria because it will melt. Then you place a multi-disc antibiotic ring on the plate with sterile forceps. So to sterilise the forceps, you would again pass them through the once and burn the flame. The multi-disc antibiotic ring may look something like this. So if I just get my pen tool, it would look like a, a ring with different strips coming out of it with discs on the end and each one of these discs will have a different antibiotic so that you can investigate the effect of the different antibiotics on the um, bacterial growth on the plate. You then place a lid on top of your agar plate and lightly tape it in place. The reason why you don't tape it completely shut is because that would prevent oxygen getting into the plate which could therefore possibly um, encourage the growth of harmful anaerobic bacteria. By anaerobic I mean bacteria that can grow without oxygen. 
You then invert the plate to prevent condensation dripping down onto the agar and incubate at 25 degrees Celsius for 48 hours. Now I have highlighted 25 degrees here because it is really, really important that you use this temperature. You may be wondering why not use something like 37 degrees, which is the um, human body temperature. The reason why we don't use that temperature is because um, harmful bacteria that is harmful to us humans could grow, so it therefore would be a hazard. After incubation, for each of the antibi antibiotics, so for each of the um, small discs on the um, antibiotic ring, you measure the diameter of the inhibition zone, which should be um, a clear circle around the discs, if there is one. You then calculate the area of the inhibition zones. In order to calculate the area, you use this formula. So we just write it here. Oops. Area equals pi times diameter d divided by four. So for example, if your diameter was two um, centimeters, you would do pi, times 2 divided by 4 which should if my calculations are correct come out to approximately 1.57 oops and yeah the image here is just to show you an example of an antibiotic ring so it's like a circle with different tabs on it indicating different antibiotics Right, so that's the actual method of the practical done. So this is just a quick table showing you the risk assessment. So you have three main hazards here. The naked flame of the Bunsen burner, so the Bunsen burner flame. And this poses an obvious risk of burns as it is a fire hazard. So in order to prevent this risk, tie up long hair as it could get caught in the fire. Wear goggles, keep away from flammable items such as your exercise books or um, instructions for the practical. The next hazard is the bacteria that you're using, which um, has an obvious risk of contamination, which could lead to an infection. So it's a biohazard. And to prevent this, you wash your hands before and after the experiment. You don't open the plate after incubation as harmful bacteria could get in. Use disinfectant before and after and incubate at 25 degrees Celsius so um, bacteria harmful to humans can't grow. The final hazard is the disinfectant used to spray down the surfaces as this is flammable so it could cause burns if a fire is occurring. So to prevent this you just keep it away from the naked bunts and burner flame or wait for the disinfectant to dry before you use the bunts and burner. So now to the results and conclusions. So what is the point in this practical? So what you have to do first is to make a bar chart depicting the area of each antibiotic inhibition zone. I'm just going to do a quick, quick sketch of this now. So you have the area. Whoops. Pen's not behaving today. Let's just say one zero one two three and list your different antibiotics. Um, so let's just say antibiotic one, antibiotic two, antibiotic three, and you would just do a bar chart, a simple bar chart. If your inhibition zones are larger, so for example in A2 we can see the area of the inhibition zone is a lot larger, this means that the antibiotic has been more successful in killing the bacteria, so it has killed more bacteria, so therefore showing that the antibiotic works a lot better. However, if there is a little or no in inhibition zone at all, which could be the case, this means that the bacteria has become resistant to the antibiotic, 
So the antibiotic does not kill the bacteria. So that is the end of that practical. So now we are going to get on to an exam question which should hopefully um, solidify your understanding of the content behind the practical. Right. So a student was provided with two agar plates. She transferred a culture of bacterium A onto one plate and a culture of bacterium B to the second plate. So two kinds of bacteria were used in this case. She placed paper discs containing antibiotics on the surface of the agar. She then incubated the plates for 24 hours. The diagram shows the agar plates before and after incubation. So these plates here are before incubation and these are after, as you can see in the text. So the student used a pair of forceps to place the paper discs onto the surface of the agar. Explain why she passed the forceps through a Bunsen flame before and after each time she used them. So this is a two mark question and it is an explain question. So you have to state why the forceps were passed through the flame. As I mentioned earlier, this is part of the aseptic technique. So it keeps the forceps sterile. So um, contamination is prevented of unwanted bacteria. So this is what I've wrote, written. S to sterilize the bacteria, on, that is possibly on the forceps, and to prevent contamination from unwanted bacteria. I have mentioned two points here, so I should get two marks. So let's look at the mark scheme. So the first marking point is to sterilise slash kill the bacteria. I put sterilise the bacteria so I get that mark. And the second marking point is so that only one kind of bacteria is present on the agar plate, which is important getting your reliable results. Or you can write to prevent contamination. And I put to prevent contamination from unwanted bacteria, so I'll get that mark. You don't have to put by bacteria because it is in brackets. So let's move on to the second part of the question. Explain the appearance of the agar plates after incubation. So make sure you read the question properly because it's asking you to write about what's happened after the incubation. So we need to look at these two plates here. So let's first look at bacterium A. As you can see with bacterium A on the paper disc containing the antibiotic tetracycline, there, there is a zone of inhibition as there is a clear circle around the disc. This indicates that um, tetracycline is effective in killing bacterium A. However, there is no zones of inhibition um, around the penicillin and streptomycin discs so this shows that the, these antibiotics do not kill the bacteria, so bacterium A is resistant to penicillin and streptomycin. If we look at bacterium B, however, there is a zone of inhibition around the penicillin disc, so this shows that penicillin is effective in killing bacterium B. But for tetracycline and streptomycin, um, the bacteria are resistant. So this is what I have written to get four marks. So I have first stated that the in inhibition zones show where bacteria have not grown. It is important to write a statement like this because the question says explain, not just describe. If you if the question said describe, you would just describe the appearance of the um, discs for each antibiotic. So I've written tetracycline killed bacterium A as there is an inhibition zone, but it had it has little effect on bacterium B, as we can see on the plates. Then I've put bacterium B, however, is killed by penicillin, but bacterium A is resistant to penicillin. 
Both types of bacteria are resistant to streptomycin as there are no inhibition zones. So here you need to um, explain the appearance of, from each of the antibiotics because it is a four mark question. So you need to write in quite a lot of detail here. Right, so if we look at the mark scheme, first marking point is the clear zone or the inhibition zone is where bacteria have not grown or where the bacteria have not been. So I'll get that mark. Um, the second marking point could be the antibiotic diffuses out of the paper disc into the agar. Um, I've not written that, but it doesn't matter because um, there are many other marking points available here. Bacterium A in inhibited or or is killed by tetracycline, or tetracycline has little effect on bacterium B. I put those, so I'll get the mark. Bacterium B is inhibited slash killed by penicillin, or bacterium A is resistant to penicillin. So I'll get that mark. You can, and you can also put both kinds of bacteria are resistant to streptomycin. I put that as well so I can get all four marks for that question. So notice how there are more than four marking points here. You do not need to write all of these to get four marks because here it says four max. So if you write all of the marking points, you do not get extra credit. Right, so that is it for this practical video. Um, I hope you got something out of it. If you have any requests or um, questions, please leave, please leave them in the comments below. And I'll see you in my next video.